Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're going to be solving equations using logarithms so we can answer questions from exercise 14f. So remember that uh, if we've got a power on a number, the way that we invert that is we use a logarithm. So a logarithm is an inverse function effectively for a power. So for example, if we take the number 2, if we do log base 2, of 2 to the x, these two here are effectively inverse operations, so we end up back at the value x. And for example as well, if we were to do 2 to the power of log base 2 of x, then effectively these are inverse operations as well, so we'll end up back at the value x again. So if we ever want to undo, for example, a power like we've got here, the way we do that is we use the inverse function to get rid of that uh, 3 to the power of something. It's a bit like squaring and square rooting. They're inverse functions of each other, so if you want to get rid of one, you apply the inverse function to that value. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look, a look at this question then. So what we need to do here is 3 to the power of x equals 20, find the value of x. So what we're going to do here is take log of the base number 3, and that will do the inverse of 3 to the power of x. So it's just x equals log base 3 of 20. Okay, so it's uh, quite a simple process. If you want to do an inverse of 3 to the power of x, you take a log of a 3 to the power of log of base 3 and you apply it to both sides. Effectively, what we had going on here was 3 to the x equals 20. And we did log base 3 of both sides, just like this, making sure we do the same thing to both sides. We effectively had log base 3 of 3 to the x equals log base 3 of 20. And three, log base 3 of 3 to the power of x is just x. And we get the log base 3 of 20. That would be how you'd write it out longhand, but really, you're just going to do this. Okay, and then you might need to calculate it. And remember, there's a button on your calculator. I may have scribbled over it here. Uh, it's just this button here underneath the integration button. Uh, you click that button, it will enter two boxes here, and you fill that with a 3 and a 20. Right, okay, so moving on to the next equation, we may have to split up. Uh, an indice like this. So 7 to the power of x plus 1 equals 3 to the power of x plus 2. So what we're going to do here is we want to try and create the same power on both of our expressions. So what I did here was I used the inverse uh, law of indices to split up um, 3 to the power of x plus 2 into 3 to the 1 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 where you can add the uh, indices back to simplify it again. And the reason I've done that is to create a power of x plus 1 on this term on the right hand side. I'll then divide by this indice so I get three to the 7 to the power of x plus 1 divided by 3 to the power of x plus 1 and I'm left with the 3 that's on the right hand side. What I can do now if I need to work out the value of x is effectively factorize this into a bracket, 7 over 3 to the power of x plus 1, because remember this is effectively the opposite rule of doing a power of a fraction. You do the same power to the top and the bottom, it's effectively factorising it out. So what I've got still is uh, 3 on the right hand side here, so what I now need to do to get rid of this power of uh, 7 over 3 is to do the log of 7 over 3. What would you do if it was 2 to the x plus 1 equals 3, you'd just do log base 2 of 3 that will give you x plus 1. But we don't have a 2 in this case, we have a 7 over 3. So what we're going to do here is taking log of a base number of 7 over 3 of 3, and that will leave us with our x plus 1. So effectively what we're doing here is getting rid of the base number on our power, and it will introduce it as a base number on the log, and then we just need to take away 1 from both sides to leave us with the value of 0 0.297. 
Okay, so quite a tricky one there. We jumped quite a lot from the first question to the second question. Maybe go back and have a look at the first question and try some examples on that before we crack on. But we are going to crack on, so we're going to try a slightly different, harder question here. And what we have here is a 5 to the 2x plus 7 lots of 5 to the x minus 30. Now you've done very well if you've quickly spotted that this roughly looks like a quadratic equation where we have an x squared part, an x part and a number part. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and transform this equation into a quadratic but it's going to have to be with the letter y rather than x. So what we're going to do is replace y, uh, replace 5 to the x with a y and if we think y squared is going to be 5x times 5x, which is the same as 5 to the 2x. So the 5 to the 2x is now going to be represented with a y squared. So now we're effectively just solving the equation y squared plus 7y minus 30 equals 0. So what do we do from here? Well, we'll obviously just factorise and then find our two possible answers of minus 10 and 3. So that's, we can't stop there though, however, because we have set y equal to 5 to the power of x. So let's bring this back in. 5 to the power of x equals 3. We'll talk about this one here in a second. Uh, how do we get rid of the 5? Well, it's a 5 to the power of something. So the inverse of 5 to the power of something is log base 5. So it's log base 5 of 3. Okay, why haven't we involved the minus 10 here? Well, remember that the graph of an exponential function is going to start at 0 and work its way up through 1 at the y-axis and up and up and up and up. Therefore, there's going to be no solutions on the bottom of this graph. There's never a time where 5 to the power of something gives me a negative answer. So in this case here, we can just think of that as having no solutions. You can never find an x such that 5 to the x equals minus 10. So we only get one answer for this question here, log base 5 of 3. We could effectively write this as 0.683. Right, okay, so two uh, pages of examples here, so pause the video and have a go at the first page. Right, okay, so first one, question 1e, is a bit of a simple taking logs question. So if we've got 9 to the power of x plus 5, what's the opposite of 9 to the power of something? Well, it's log of 9. So we just do log of 9 to both sides. On the left, we're back to x plus 5, and on the right, we're at log 9 of 50. Then we take away 5 from this, so we get log base 9 of 50, take away 5, and I'm going to leave my answer there. You can work it out as a decimal if you want to, but I'm happy to leave it just there. Okay, for this second question here, 2a, we're going to look at the quadratic type of uh, equations. So what we're going to do from the ne one line to the next is replace y with 2 to the power of x. And in this case here, y squared is going to be 2 to the power of 2x. So what we get here then is y squared minus 6y plus 5 equals 0. So therefore, factorising this, we get a minus 5 and a minus 1. So what are our two solutions for y? Well, we get y equals 5 and y equals 1. So therefore, bringing our substitution back in, 2 to the x equals 5 and uh, 2 to the x equals 1. Now we need to find x, so what we're going to do, the opposite of 2 to the power of something is log of 2, so it's log of 2 base number of 5, sorry, number of 5. And for the second one here it's going to be log base 2 of 1, and log of any base of the number 1 is just 0. Effectively, it's because any number to the power of 0 equals 1. So we've got two answers here, log base 2 of 5 and 0. 
Right, the second page of questions now. Pause the video and have a go at these two. Right, then I really have chosen the tough questions here. So what are we going to do here? The tricky part here with the question 2D is that we've got 3 to the power of x plus 1. What we're going to do is treat 3 to the power of x plus 1 as 3 to the power of 1 times 3 to the power of x. Effectively, what we're doing here is we're splitting up the rule of indices, where if you times the same indice, you add the powers. So effectively, what we've got here now, we've changed the equation here into 3 to the power of 2x plus 3, lots of 3 to the x, minus 10 equals 0. And what we'll now do is we'll use y equals 3 to the power of x. So it's y squared plus 3y minus 10 equals 0. And then factorize here, so it's plus 5 and minus 2. So here y equals minus 5, which will give us no solutions because we can never get a power that will give us a negative value, or y equals 2. So therefore 3, e 3 to the power of x equals 2. So therefore x, the opposite of 3 to the power of something, is log base 3 of that number 2. Okay, so that's the only answer to question 2D. Let's have a look at 5A now. So what we want to do with 5A, remember, is to create an expression where the power on the et power on the number is equal. So what we want to do here is split this up using a similar splitting up of indices here between uh, the 2x plus 1 into 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of x. What we'll do next is divide by 2 to the power of x, so it's effectively 5 to the power of x divided by 2 to the power of x, leaves us with a 2. Factorise out the power on the x, and then what's the opposite of doing 5, to, 5 over 2 to the power of something? Well, it's going to be log base 5 over 2 of 2. And that's our final answer there, log of 2.5 of 2. Okay, so that's all, uh, all the questions we're going to go through here. Make sure you have lots of practice. We've covered a lot of the difficult questions in this exercise here. Make sure you have lots of practice at the easy ones as well, so they, they come naturally to you as well. But uh, yeah, so make sure you persevere through these difficult ones, such as the ones we've been through here, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.